Okay, in this video we're going to learn about strokes. Um, I'll just quickly mention uh, that always keep a, an eye on the scale of your drawing. It's useful in Illustrator to turn the rulers on and off in order to do this because it um, lets you know when you're uh, paying too much attention to detail which might not matter. Um, if you look at the background here um, where you can see it's been left as a CAD generated indication of a staircase, I could spend a fair bit of time making that staircase look pretty fantastic or indeed putting more detail into the louvers. Um, if I zoom in up here, but I often don't bother because at the scale that this drawing is going to be viewed at, and if I zoom out this is probably perhaps that's even more an, ac an accurate depiction of the ac actual scale of this drawing uh, once it's populated with people and colour, um, it just doesn't, it isn't worth spending much more time on it. So always be wary of that. Okay, so strokes. Now as you know uh, already we can apply a, a stroke um, or brush is essentially an appearance change to a path. So if I get my selection tool, which is shortcut V, the, the black triangle, sorry black arrow, and I select a path, which is the top line of this um, roofing member, um, you can see I've got the path selected and in our control bar at the top we can start changing all different aspects of the stroke. I'll start by clicking on the blue stroke hyperlink, which opens up the menu um, and allows us to do all sorts of things, um, intimately control the different properties of the stroke. You can see the weight at 0.2 millimeters we can change. You can change the way it ends, um, whether it ends with a flat chop or if it um, um, has a round finish. So you will only probably notice that when the line is, um, when the stroke is quite thick. So if I give it a one millimeter stroke and I'll just zoom into the end, you can see that's got a round cap. So you can see that gives it a certain aesthetic appearance in um, in um, certain scenarios. So I'll make that a bit smaller again, down to 0.25 millimeters. I'll select that line, the path, open it up. So same with corners, aligning strokes, dashed lines, extremely useful. Um, this is a package in which you can specify exactly how you want your line to be dashed. So if I just zoom out so we can see it a bit better, indicating hidden lines, um, 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 uh, the floors above certain floors if you're looking at in plan and for other reasons you want to dash lines, you use this tool in the stroke properties bar um, and you can see how the strokes, um, a few options for how the dash starts at uh, right angles, whether it um, aligns dashes to corners and path ends, adjusting lengths to fit or the other one. Um, so you can have a dash at two millimeters with a one millimeter gap, then a one millimeter dash, then a one millimeter gap, and you can see that gives us, or we can even go smaller for the 0 0.5 millimeter gap, and you can see that is a industry standard dashed line with absolute control. So I'll go into stroke, and I can uncheck that. Another extremely useful, especially for diagramming, which is something we'll show you later when we're creating our panel. Um, Illustrator is brilliant for diagramming. You can go to the stroke and you can give it an arrowhead. So we'll put the arrowhead on oops, wrong side. Often difficult to know which side we're looking at, and we can add an arrowhead. So, for example, if I get my pen tool, boom, I'll hold Shift to make it line up and then I want to I'll press V so I can click on it, get my arrow head and on the end, which is where I stop drawing it, put an arrow I'll just take the arrow head off this other one so it looks a little less unrealistic you can see that we can annotate with quite a degree of um, personalization we can even scale that arrow right down so it's quite small and you'll see there's a quite a huge array of different types of arrows including bubbles and you can use the lock here the lock constraint, constraints which just makes the end property and start property the same so it saves us a bit of time and you can choose to align that arrow head beyond or uh, in front of the end of that path choosing the profile we can do in the control bar and you'll see it just means the um, profile of the um, line starts from big to small so you can actually draw individual geometries along a defined path 
um, that have shifting profiles. So I'll delete that. I'll zoom back up here and we'll have a select our path again at the top of the roof, at the top of our drawing and have a look at a few different um, options in the control bar. So there again is the change in profile and that's a change in profile for the basic brush. Now brushes are extremely useful. Um, you'll see we have a few options for um, brush size. If you're familiar with Photoshop you'll recognize that. It just enables us to choose almost calligraphic um, brushes as though you were choosing the uh, profile of the brush but uh, quite a, you'll see how the, um, it changes with the direction the brush has been dragged um, but you'll see we also have a few different predefined um, brush appearances that give it a certain appearance now they're all controlled by the, um, using the, the scale of the stroke 0 0.353 is what we have at the moment if I make that 0 0.05 millimeters You'll see it's not actually depicting the um, width of the stroke, but it enables us to um, control this rather unique brush stroke um, in itself. Now, each brush stroke has a start and finish point, and it starts and finishes at the beginning of the um, path and ends at the end of the path, and it's a single graphic that gets stretched out along that path. So if you wanted to break that into a dashed line, you'll see that the path stops and starts at the beginning and end of each dash because each one is technically an individual path. Something to be aware of, that's how it works. Now this is where it gets a lot of fun because you can go up to this rather small icon at the top of our drop down menu. You click on that and it drops out a bunch of different options. So you can click new brush, remove brush stroke. I won't go into this in too much detail at the moment. I probably will do, do so more in the advanced section but you can choose from a, a whole array of different um, um, types of strokes which is great when you really want to add um, some um, unique character to your drawing and you'll see we've got some really obscure strokes here you wouldn't even think they were strokes but if I just apply that stroke to our drawing you'll see we've got something which doesn't look like a line at all but has many other applications and you can of course and I'll show you this in a later video in the advanced segment make your own strokes and that's where things really get exciting uh, for panel presentations and you can personalize your own drawing and when you see um, you know drawings that are done in Revit or Archicad and haven't been edited in this way um, they have a certain aesthetic and it's the aesthetic of the um, the, um, the properties that come with that drawing, with that with that CAD program, because CAD programs are, at the end of the day, they're not graphic design programs, they're for documentation. So they have a certain look, um, but in architecture, especially at uni, you often want to get your own aesthetic. You'll, we'll, we'll have a look at the hand-drawn drawings of famous architects, and they'll have a certain um, appeal, which uh, you can't get in CAD programs, but in Illustrator, as a graphic design program, you can customize it almost infinitely.